friends, Jerry Rosie here in the Rosa Stringworks Workshop. I was going through a bunch of my old videos trying to clean up space on my computer because these videos suck up the storage space. And I found a gem that I have never produced. It's an older video. Uh, it was one of my early ones. Uh, and uh, I don't know how well I can edit this out and make it look halfway decent for you since it was one of the very early ones. But uh, I should have produced this one a long time ago. It's one that I regretted not having out there. I kept thinking, man, I should have had video on this. And sure enough, I found it today. So take a look and uh, hope you enjoy it. It's really quite a repair. Thank you. And we have a Luthiers project today. This is one that uh, separates the men from the boys. <laughs> and I uh, could be the very first one in 30 years that I might not be able to fix. I mean, I mean, I can fix it. There's, I know I can fix it because there's, you can go to some extreme. But you know, I don't know if I need to go to this kind of crazy extreme on this. This wouldn't be too bad. See how it's kind of missing something? It wouldn't even actually be that bad had they not already tried to glue it a few other times. This has been repaired two other times. And there's glue everywhere. There's splines of wood put in here. Uh, there's very little left to work with. So, how do we fix this? All I can say is, Grab a seat and hang on. We're going to see what we can do. Uh, I don't. I don't intend for this to be the first guitar that I've had in my shop in 30 years that I couldn't fix. So we're going to fix it somehow. I don't know how yet, but we're going to fix it. The problem with glue and the glue is it just does not work. Uh, I've tried it. I mean, I know it doesn't work from experience, but uh, it just does not work. Um, so. I have no faith in gluing, just putting glue in here and putting this back together. Uh, we've got to figure out something. Well, friends, I tell you what, this guitar, I told you, is one of the toughest ones I've had in 30 years on a neck break. Don't get me wrong, I've fixed hundreds of neck breaks. They're not that tough to do. The problem with this one is it's been broke twice before and been fixed twice before. That makes it really tough. So, I decided to cut my losses, start over, basically. Uh, I was trying to remove the old glue, trying to get rid of all the damage that had been done. It just wasn't happening. And it was so thin and so little wood material left that I decided there's a better way to fix this. I don't like it doing it this way, but it's the only way to leave some of the integrity intact and fix the guitar and make it perfectly fine. I mean, it will be 100%. It'll never break again, um, barring an accident, of course. So what I had to do was I just cut off all the bad stuff. And even, st even so, I still couldn't get rid of all the bad stuff. There's still stuff that they had cut out in here and things like that. So I'm, I've, I've, I'm basically going to be able to salvage the whole rest of the peg head. Um, I'm going to cut a piece of wood that'll fit this and, and, and come back to the neck. I had to cut away the neck also. So we're basically going to replace a piece of wood between here and the peg stock and the peg head. And we're going to be able to uh, fill that all in with new wood and make it match with the uh, truss rod. And the truss rod will function and everything will be perfectly normal when we're done. Um, it's going to look good too. It'll actually look better than it would have if I had tried to fix it the other way. So in the long run, this is the way to fix it. Uh, much harder fix. I have just did most of this off camera. Basically off camera now, I'm going to make me a piece of wood that fits in between these two places. And I will be back with you and show you what that looks like before we glue it up. Okay, it took a little while to make this piece. And right now it's still pretty crude. But here's the idea, see, I've, I've cut, cut that way back. I've got the truss rod exposed. I slide this piece on like so. This piece here fits on uh, the back like this. And then we have to recarve everything to make it match. And uh, 
It's not going to be simple, but uh, it's going to work, I believe. I've measured everything and got the angles correct, so the angle of the peg head and the length of the peg head is right. Um, it's the only way I know to do it, and we'll just see how it works. So, uh, once again, I'll turn the camera down like where you can see it here. And that's what it looks like. So we're going to glue all that up now, and uh, or we're going to glue these. I'm going to glue up these two pieces first, and get them straight. I've got lines down through here that line up with the body, the neck, everything's straight. So I'll line all those lines up, glue it, glue this part first, let it set up. Then I'll rough it. I'll draw all the lines on here with pencil, and I'll rough this all out with a bandsaw. And uh, once we once we um, get this roughed out, then we'll glue it up to this part. And uh, then we'll do the final shaping. This is probably one of the harder neck fixes I've ever attempted because of the two previous breaks and the other repairs that were attempted. And I'm not saying they didn't do a good job, it's just, just the way it is. And uh, anyway, I have... Uh, put it back together roughly. I made my wedge that I told you. I put a wedge in here and I put a wedge to this head plate. I tried to make sure all the angles were pretty close. I'm not saying it's perfect, but it's pretty close. And uh, so now that rough piece of wood now needs to be shaped back to a guitar neck. And that's what I'll be doing today. I'll probably start with a rasp and, and rough rasp this. I'm gonna leave as much meat as I can though because it needs to be a little beefier uh, with a plug in here like this. Um, as far as I can tell, this will be really solid and I don't think it'll ever break again. Um, but you just never know. And uh, so I want to leave as much meat as I can while uh, still making it very playable. Okay, we're in another part of the shop right now and uh, I've got the camera set up. I've, what I've done is I've taken a clamp, put it in a vise, and then clamped the neck inside that clamp. Uh, to hold it so I can work on this. I'll show you what that looks like. You can see the vise and there's a clamp in there and then I have leather wrapped around the neck and a hole cut out in that clamp so that it kind of roughly assumes the shape of the neck and then I clamp that down around the neck and that'll hold it while I'm shaping that block. And while I do this, I, of course I'm going to try to take, take it easy, I don't want to go real crazy fast, but on the other hand this goes pretty fast, this is not a long time. That was a pretty coarse rasp I've been using. It's a very coarse rasp. I've got it pretty close. It's still quite proud. It's ten thousandths proud everywhere at least. So I'm going to go to a smoother rasp. I'll have to clean this thing. It's got all kinds of dirt in it. But uh, we'll use a smoother rasp to get a little bit closer, bring it down another half of that or maybe a little more, and then we'll go to a finer rasp yet. I misquoted that a minute ago. When I said ten thousandths, that's not what I meant. I meant a uh, hundred thousandths. The um, I've got my decimal place in the wrong place. Uh, so it was about a hundred thousandths proud. I'm bringing it down to probably around twenty thousandths, thirty thousandths proud at this point. Okay, I've got a much smaller double cut file now. This one's a pretty smooth file. Um, it's still good for shaping, but it's pretty smooth and will let me get rid of some of the other bigger marks. Bring it down and I have a little more control over it. I'm going to have to get some more light on this, by the way. Okay, I basically, I'm just going to be here a minute, so I just put a flashlight on it for the moment, just so I can see this a little better where I'm getting down to this detail. 
this is done correctly, you won't even feel this joint. And uh, it's already starting to go away. I can tell it's just about gone already. I think that's about all I'm gonna do in this room. I'm gonna take it back to the bench and do the real fine shaping now. Okay, we're back at the bench, and as you can see, it's uh, pretty closely shaped now. Now you can see there's some damage in this area right in here, and uh, that's just going to be there. The, uh, I will fill that and make it look as good as I can, but that was just from the previous repairs. I just couldn't cut enough wood away to get rid of that. Got as much of it away as I could. But now we're just basically going to just take some very small files and sandpaper and scrapers and, and just make this match the peg head and the neck as perfectly as possible. It's already a pretty darn good fit, so it's not going to be too difficult. I'll just start off with a very small little rat tail or half round file and uh, put the close up specs on so I can see the detail. Shed a little more light on the subject too. And uh, we'll just go to town on it. If you're wondering the kind of wood I use to fill this with, this gap between here and here, it's uh, mahogany, the same as the neck is made out of. And uh, it, I think once we stain it and everything, uh, assuming we can get the stain to match pretty close, um, I think you'll actually have to look at it pretty close to realize that this has been done. Looks pretty obvious right now because the wood's not stained, but uh, I think once we stain it, you're going to see this thing magically disappear. Alright, this side is uh, pretty good. I don't really even feel it. Uh, if you don't look at it, you don't even know it's there. So. Wow. You'd really be surprised how that feels. You can barely, barely tell it's there at all. And, uh, it, uh, and I think that'll go away once we get it finished and sanded and all that. Um, I think it's going to go away pretty good. Okay, I'm going to try to work on this little area here that's just busted out and uh, do some fill to that and clean that up. Before I do that though, I'm going to look at this front side. I, this bevel here is very, very, very close already. It's, it almost is invisible. I, I cut it that way and, and sanded it that way before I glued it. And fortunately it stayed pretty close. It's not perfect and so we're going to have to work on this just a little bit to get this better. And the problem with this is, of course, this is on the front and there's paint there and so, I don't know, just going to have to work on it, get rid of, there's a little bit of glue squeeze out that I couldn't get off with the rag. It's just a hair higher on this side than it is on this side, just a hair. So uh, I'm going to have to work on that a little bit. Maybe I'll just take a little sanding block and a little hardwood block and a little small piece of sandpaper and see if I can level that out just a little bit. Feels pretty good. I'm going to take a little wet or dry and using it dry sandpaper. 320 grit and uh, buff this out a little bit up here now just by hand. Okay, do a little bit of final sanding here. I say final, it's getting pretty close to the end here on this. I'm going to have to do some fill here, but I thought I'd sand the majority of it before I do this fill. Okay, this fill area is a uh, just damage from the previous repairs, so nothing I can do about that except fill it. It's just that's all there is. Yeah, I just felt a little mighty tiny spot here. 
Okay, just for grins, I'm going to put some dark dye on that just to show you that I believe it's going to disappear pretty good. Now, this dye probably won't match the color exactly right off the bat, but it's okay. We can always mix and match with this kind of dye, so just uh, put a little bit on here and see how well this thing looks. It's going to, I think it'll make it look a lot better. The dye always makes it show up where the problem spots are too, so I like to put dye on there and see what it looks like. Okay, so you can see now it's starting to look like something. It's not terrible, not great, but not terrible. And uh, now I'm just going to go ahead and fill that back there. And uh, I'm just going to use plain old wood filler. I don't know of anything better that's going to work on this. I could spend an hour or two trying to cut a little plug and match it up a little bit better, but uh, it would just cost more than it would be worth. And it wouldn't look much better anyway. So you basically sometimes you just cut your losses and do it the easy way. Alright, we'll set that aside to dry for a few hours and let that get good and dry. Sand that off and probably apply another coat or two of that. And then we'll start trying to get serious about the color of the stain and uh, put a little finish on it. We're pretty much just about done with this thing. It's, I believe it's going to be very strong. I believe it'll hold. Um, is it as strong as it was originally? I'd say 90 to 95 percent as strong as it was originally. So I think it's very strong. I don't think it's going to ever break again. Um, I like to do what I call 50-year repairs. Basically, it's a repair that ought to last 50 years. And I would say this ought to last 50 years, no problem. Okay, we're... We filled this, sanded this. Uh, it's pretty darn smooth. You can't even really feel it now. So uh, we're uh, going to go ahead and tr do the final staining. And uh, uh, I put some black in with the dark brown. My, the problem with the brown on this dye is that it's too red. So the black brings that down some. And uh, boy, that looks like a pretty good match right there. I'm going to call that pretty good. I hope it is anyway. Looks like it is. Maybe it'll dry good and then we'll be good. Well, it looks like a pretty good match overall. It's dull looking compared to the shiny parts, but uh, once we put a little finish on that, I think we're pretty good. Compared to where this thing was, it's almost a miracle. Well, we're back with the Gibson neck repair, and I have to say I'm pretty happy with this one. It turned out real nice. Um, I'm going to show you here. I'm going to wipe the dust off of it so that you can see how well it turned out. If you recall what that looked like, and here it is finished. And uh, yeah, it's, you know, you can see it a little bit here and there and stuff, but as far as playable and uh, salvage in a guitar, this thing has been salvaged. and. Uh, it's about as good as it gets, and I would say it's every bit as strong as it was from the factory. It's not going to break again unless they would do something crazy like drop it or let it fall over and bust. You can see the line around there where I had to graft in the piece of neck and how it was carved and shaped and finished. I'm sure he's going to be happy. I don't think this one will have to be repaired again. This was the third repair on that neck. First one I did, of course, but... I hope the customer is happy with that. Hope you enjoyed that project and uh, please look forward to more of my videos out there and uh, 
Click the like button and also uh, click the subscribe button and tell your friends. Thank you. Thank you.